we have a bunch of hermit crabs here. They do not have their own shell. And what they need to do is they have to go and borrow shells from another bee. And in this case, over here, we have them borrowing shells from marine snails. Hi, my name is Shabir and this is the Library Report, a series where we talk to interesting people, explore exciting spaces and unearth compelling stories. In this episode, join me on an adventure on sustainability and marine biodiversity as we delve into the hidden world of intertidal life. I'll be meeting a librarian to uncover the sustainability features and programs of our libraries and how you can get involved. Stay tuned because this episode will also take us to the coast where we'll uncover the mysteries of the often overlooked creatures in the intertidal zone. Hi Gladys, thank you very much for joining me today. So you're a librarian who's focusing on sustainability. Can you tell me more about that? Hi, I'm a librarian in the Early Literacy team and my work focuses on sustainability. So that means I work with our library partners to create content and programs about sustainability topics for young children and their families. So we're in a very interesting space. This library has got many interesting sustainability features. Could you share more about that? So we are currently at Chua Chukang Public Library and here you'll find spots of greenery and nature right in the library. So it's a communal space that focuses on environmental awareness and sustainable living. So a key highlight of this library is the green growth at level 4. Over there, we have a hydroponic showcase where we hold programs to foster interest in urban farming solutions and also food security in Singapore. And what's also interesting about the library is the indoor garden that acts as a green space for reading. That's really cool. Can you tell us more about the sustainability programs and initiatives by NLB? Sustainability is actually one of our learning focus areas at NLB and we have a wide range of programs catered to different ages throughout the year. As climate change impacts many areas of life such as natural heritage, food security, jobs, infrastructure and policy, it's important for us to learn about sustainability so that we can understand the challenges facing us. In our programs, children get to learn about topics like recycling, upcycling, food, plants and animals through fun and interactive arts and crafts and storytelling sessions. While for adults, we have topic experts to address a variety of more complex topics such as biodiversity, food technology or the green economy. Workshops on lifestyle topics like gardening are also extremely popular, especially among our seniors. One of our largest events is the Green Market, an annual event with programs such as talks, workshops and exhibitions. It aims to empower everyone to pursue sustainable goals as a community by introducing them to sustainability principles and connecting them to green groups and initiatives that they can support. So in the past, we've had green markets themed on agri-technology, water and green living. Last year, it was celebrating nature, where we spotlight the incredible biodiversity that lives amongst us. Is there a theme or focus for this year's green market? Every year, green market spotlights a unique theme. For this year, it's the marine environment. This year, we decided to dive deeper into the natural wonders of the underwater world, which is a timely topic with issues of rising sea levels, seafood supply chains and ocean pollution. These issues are increasingly impacting people around the globe and here in Singapore. What are the activities or programs people can expect at this year's Green Market? At the upcoming Green Market, participants can look forward to an exciting lineup of programs including talks, panel discussions, film screenings and learning journeys brought to them by local blue groups and organisations. These programs will touch on the various dimensions of the marine environment including marine biodiversity, conservation work, climate change and more. Patrons will also be able to meet and connect with these green groups at a booth exhibition held inside the library. And for families with children, there'll be plenty of activities, storytellings and workshops that will excite children from toddlers to teens. One of the organisations that we work with for Green Market is Untamed Paths, who will be conducting workshops to teach members of the public about intertidal zones and the marine life in them. These workshops aim to educate members of the public on how their day-to-day -day habits can affect marine life. Gladys, thank you so much for this very insightful conversation. It's great to know that you know uh, NLB is connecting people to nature and the environment. And after having this conversation, I can't wait to experience them for myself. After hearing about the green market and the marine environment programs, I'm excited to get my feet wet. I'll be joining Untamed Paths to learn about the marine life in intertidal zones. Let's go. Hi, Dennis. Hi, 
Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you too. So before we get started, could you tell us more about the work that you do with Untamed Paths? Right. So Untamed Paths was started because of our love for nature and outdoors, and specifically nature outdoor education. And our journey thus far has been on about our passion for biodiversity in Singapore and around the world. We hope to bring these immersive nature experiences to everyone in Singapore and share with them the amazing biodiversity such as marine, terrestrial and even avian fauna. NLB Green Market is a great way for us to actually bring nature insights on wildlife, nature and conservation to everyone in Singapore. Right, would you tell me more about the intertidal zone before we jump in? So the intertidal zone is actually quite an amazing habitat. It is part of the shore that is submerged during high tide and exposed during low tide. So every day we do get two high tides and two low tides. However, not every low tide is suitable for an intertidal walk. Uh, and we are quite fortunate today that it is low enough for us to explore the intertidal zone. It is a relatively safe experience and try as much as possible to follow me so that we don't carelessly step on the rest of the habitat. Right, sounds exciting, let's go! We are here on the high shore today. We have quite a few empty shells as well as bones from fish. And the true cause of death, we do not know for sure. But one probable reason would be the fluctuating temperatures and the fluctuating salinity levels, as well as the weather, right? If it's um, hot and sunny, as well as if it's dry, it's not too good for the animals. And that's what we will explore today. So right now, we have a bunch of hermit crabs here. They do not have their own shell. And what they need to do is they have to go and borrow shells from another being. And in this case, over here, we have them boring shells from marine snails. So when a marine snail dies, the first things that actually would benefit the hermit crabs. As you can see, some of the shells are really nice and beautiful. And people to come here and actually pick these shells, not knowing that there are actually hermit crabs in them. Mm. Shabia, can you spot anything over here? Um, I mean, I see some seaweed and I saw a couple of hermit crabs and that's about it, right? There is one quite fascinating animal that lives in the sand. Mm -hmm. Now, this is called the sand dollar. Right, it gets its name right, from them living into the sand, which is one way that intertidal animals kind of adapt to the harsh environment. Over here, we have the black sea urchin. Mm -hmm. okay, now, the black sea urchin is, they actually have debris stuck on them. Mm. Um, this is so that they remain well camouflaged in the intertidal zone. Some of the debris are actually plastic man-made uh, objects. Yes. Right? So you can see some plastic over yes, here. Yeah. They have tube feet. Now this tube feet is what is keeping the debris together. Right. right. And over here we have the test of the urchin. Mm. So the test is what we call the outer skeleton. And when an urchin dies, the spines drop off, leaving behind this outer skeleton. Now, early on, we saw many other echinoderms. This pink water sea cucumber is another echinoderm. Now, in the case of this particular sea cucumber, it's using its tube feet to attach itself to a rock. And that is how it stays in place, anchors itself when the change of time. One thing about the sea cucumber is that they can actually eviscerate, expel their internal organs when they feel threatened or stressed. They do regenerate the internal organs. However, it takes a long time, right? And that is one reason why we should not touch the sea cucumber. We have a window pane shell. Now, the window pane shell is part of the window pane clam. The wrist window pane clam is actually a bivalve. And what this means is there are two valves. Both sides of the shell is actually held together by two muscles, the primary adductor muscle and the secondary adductor muscle. We have here is called the hinge, which looks like a V-shape. Mm. And that is where the clam kind of hinges and opens right. up. So it's a really nice shell, and that is one reason why this is commonly collected on the shore, which is not um, something that we want to encourage. Right. And that is all for Intertidal Exploration today. Hope you had fun. Yeah, man, it was really fun. I learned so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Wow, I never knew that we had so many animals living on our seashores. Earlier, you did mention that these marine life get affected by external factors. What are they? Right, so the animals that we just saw on the intertidal zone, they are mostly filter feeders. So if you think about it, they are very much affected by water quality. Right, and water quality would then involve stuff like your fluctuating temperatures, your fluctuating salinity, uh, as well as climate change. And our role as nature guides is to actually facilitate this seamless learning process and to make seemingly complex topics easy to comprehend. What advice would you give members of the public who may be unaware of how their actions may harm marine life? 
consumption is directly related to waste. So if you can reduce your consumption, you reduce the waste. For example, with um, the intertidal zone, if you are out for a barbecue by the beach and you're using plastic, you're using straws, and these things kind of get carelessly discarded, um, the plastic can actually get into the ocean and negatively harm the animals. Right? The animals can ingest them or even get entangled in um, loose plastic. This has a negative impact on the ecosystem in general and end of the day, it's not so good for the animals. Dipping my toes into the bustling life of the intertidal zone has definitely taught me a lot about marine life and the impact that we have. If you're looking to learn about how you can be more sustainable, don't forget to catch the Green Market happening at the Central Public Library on the 8th and 9th of June. That's all that we have for today's episode of the Library Report. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a like and hit that notification button to get notified when we upload a new video. See you in the next one.